Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. The weather word for Boston and vicinity tonight, fair. Low temperatures, 65 to 70 degrees. Variable winds, 5 to 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. High temperatures in the 80s, except near 80 along the coast. South to southeast winds, 10 to 15 miles an hour. Tomorrow night, fair, little temperature change. Saturday, generally fair with little temperature change. The present reading, 78 degrees. The top story of the hour, James Earl Ray is quoted as saying, Federal agents killed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and made him the scapegoat. And that's the 9 o'clock WBZ report with portions recorded. I'm Streeter Stewart. Two five four five six seven eight. Two five four five six seven eight. Hello, America. We're back again on hour number two of the 8 to Midnight Ride. This is Jerry Williams, my guest tonight, talking uh, for the next hour about collections, your money, that is. Addis Williams, uh, New England Collectors Association. Louis Tanner, director of the American Collectors Association. Bill Rose, a former collector. And Bill Martin, who works within the poverty program and is the executive director of North Shore NASCAP. I wanted to find out about this business of credit, uh, the kind of thing you worked in, uh, uh, Bill. Uh, on one hand... Uh, uh, the retail establishments are asking uh, this particular agency for credit on, a, on, a, on a one human being, and on the other hand, with the same same stationery, they're using the same say, stationery to collect. Did you find that to be so within your organization? It was the same stationery, Jerry, only, uh, of course, in the letterhead it mentioned a uh, collection bureau affiliated with the credit bureau. Mm -hmm, yes. And also uh, affiliated with uh, consumers' credit counseling, mm -hmm. which I'd like to mention for a second. This, uh, of the three there, this consumer's credit counseling, I thought was the, the best thing going up there. We had accounts on people that range from anywhere from a hundred to a thousand dollars. We would try to get these people into the office. If we found there was nothing we could do for them, we would send them to consumer's credit counseling. They would uh, more or less prorate the bills, uh, contact the creditor for the debtor, and set up uh, monthly or weekly payments, whatever it might be. Now, th this I was all for. I, I could see it, that uh, it was a good thing, and uh, it's too bad that maybe more people shouldn't, shouldn't use this, you see. Mm -hmm. Bill, uh, you, you, you... Yeah, I'm, I'm, you, you know, know I, I hope what you're not talking about is debt pooling where the cut comes right off the top, and which is uh, the way it's exercised in many states and some of our finer states of Arkansas and Mississippi and Georgia. Um, debt pooling is legal and really robs the poor a little bit more because their fee, if, if they add up all of their indebtedness, is $1,000, they take their fee right off the top. No. It's, no. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, as a collector, we, we set up a policy a number of years ago that we will not deal with a deal uh, with a debt pooling outfit right. because it's a racket. And they how? They're, 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 they're living literally living as parasites off the poor by taking uh, they, t they ask for a big fee before they'll even start with these people lord knows what they do with the fee but they put it in their pocket and then as the as the debtor brings in his salary each week they disperse it but keep back right, a rather a sizable amount mm -hmm. and they're preying on the poor could but i explain myself just <laughs> real quick? hey by the way where's nebraska that's west of newton <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this was a no fee to the debtor at all. Of course, the, coll the collection bureau would get their commission, which naturally they would get if we were to collect it without the, the help of the consumer's credit counseling. There were organizations or firms uh, in the city that would prorate these bills at, uh, boy, I can't, uh, I can't think now, just it seemed like it was around 4 or 8 percent of what your total indebtedness was. But the, uh, there at the consumers, they would not charge there was no charge they would do this free which their fee would come from the merchants this would be all tie in together but uh, like I say the collection bureau would get their commission which naturally they would want anyway you see yeah well uh, let me ask that question again or re-ask it about the business of credit bureaus being involved in collections uh, is this uh, cricket as far as you all are concerned uh, bill martin first i know you're going to say no obviously right uh, <laughs> you know it's uh, a definite kind uh, how about the collectors well, there's federal legislation in the hop and out to prohibit just this very sort of thing um 
this is a practice that started a number of years ago. Uh, it just seemed to the credit bureau operators that collecting the delinquent natural. accounts was yeah. a natural adjunct sure. to the service they were operating, uh, offering to their clients presently. But I think you'd find that the vast majority of collection agencies are in no way affiliated mm. with a credit bureau. I'm sure that's true, but there and are credit bureaus, legitimate credit bureaus, who are, are involved with my everyday credit and are making judgments on me every day who are then collecting money that I owe from other guys and are using one against the other. That's correct. Mm. And right here in Boston, as a matter of fact. Absolutely. And, and uh, they look yeah. like bankers. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the point. Bankers, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make this statement right now. Bankers sell money. That's all they do. And they sell it at big numbers, 8%. They sell money, ladies and gentlemen. I want to make that very clear, that they are no better than you or me. They sell money. And I just make that statement every favors. night. <laughs> 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 I want to break the image down of nice, austere bankers who are there selling money and investing your money every single day into big numbers. Now, now, where were we? And make low-rate loans to congressmen. <laughs> uh, and big uh, depositors. Uh, Jerry, I'd like to suggest this uh, uh, in this, in this uh, credit counseling or debt counseling service that uh, is growing, I think, uh, in a number of states throughout the country where, where some governmental agency or some independent organization for nonprofit is legitimately setting up an organization for the purpose of helping families handle their financial mm. problems. All right, one that, of the and, interesting thing, Lou... In that the, sounds like a good idea. You're doing that, aren't you, Bill? No, in the HUD, in the, um, it was cut completely out by Congress, but uh, one of the provisions of the current Housing Act uh, is to provide uh, debt counseling uh, for people, so low-income people particularly, so that they can buy homes, low- and moderate-income people, but it was cut out by Congress. I'm going to ask a final question. And, Give and, me a, a wrap-up. You know, just one yeah, other point. Right. You know, where was your industry uh, in supporting this legislation in Congress? Like, you know, uh, apparently it's a new idea that you should support legislation in Massachusetts to increase the budget of the banking department. You know, you can play uh, a very I have very an answer for you, role. Bill. The American Collectors Association has just hired a full-time man for the purpose of representing the collector's interests as, as well as the consumers in Washington. Yeah, uh, can I give a suggestion there? It seems to me, you know, for instance, we're moving in directions where we are providing advocates of the poor. Uh, for instance, in the Title I program in Peabody, we are trying to get the school department which receives money to hire uh, to allocate money for an advocate of the poor who will not be on the payroll of the school department but will be on the payroll of an independent agency because if a, if a person is on your payroll uh, just as if they're on my payroll they are beholden to me and my interests you know if your group would finance an advocate who would be on the payroll of a third organization then I think you'd get something done I, I want to make this final remark before we get to the calls. We don't have a representative here because we don't have any more microphones mm -hmm. of, of the legal profession, uh, which would have gotten us into another bag entirely. Another uh, holy uh, group. Right, the legal profession who, uh, who collect. And the, these people attach salaries, wages, uh, bank accounts, and use all of the... A lot of the ugly tactics that uh, maybe we uh, can't get into tonight because these gentlemen don't uh, get, haven't got that power and don't use that power. We're going to get to the telephone calls next at 254-5678, area code 617. Uh, ask any questions, make any comments you like, and please don't tell us any sad tales. Sad tales, uh, we, we don't want to hear. We want to hear about the issues, and that's the most important thing. That's a pretty usual sound. For a pretty unusual, let your hair down, sing along, and revere. It's called Okie Funoki. There's lots of foot stomping and hand clapping to swing at banjos and guitars. Try out your vocal cords and follow the bouncing ball. Okie Funoki is on the boulevard in Revere, and they're all tuned up just waiting for you. So spread the word and join the way out in crowd at Okie Funoki. Okie Funoki is rated S for us. Wingers. All right, does that take care of that? We have one more. Oh, oh I do that. Do, do I do that? Or do you do that? Who does that? You do that? You do that. It's 915 on WBZ Radio, the spirit of 103. What's the cleanest way to heat a house? Flameless electricity, of course. There's no burning, no slip, no smoke. Nothing to make extra work for you. So forget that old flame. 
Call Boston Edison at 424-2261. We'll show you how you can have clean, quiet electric heat for just about the cost of a second-best system. That's Boston Edison at 424-2261. Electricity is the cleanest way to eat. Now let's continue with the calls and comments at 2545678. Uh, good evening, you're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Williams. You struck me right at the right time with this collection agency. I'll try to make it as brief as I can. Well, if you, what? I'll try to make it brief. Yeah. I thought... If you're not going to tell us a long story... 11 November to February... I'm going to interrupt if you tell me a story. A because collection agency. Thank, you, thank you very know. much. Next call, please, at 254-5678. If you're going to tell stories, we don't want to hear it. Hello? Hello, Jerry. Wait. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, I'm surprised I got through. Uh, I'm employed uh, by a local branch of a nationwide credit corporation as a collector. And um, I was uh, leaving work the other night about this time, Tuesday night, and I heard a uh, comment on your show. Uh, I just caught the end of it, and it said that uh, uh, you told the gentleman that uh, all he had to pay was what he could afford. And this immediately scared me because I figured from now on I'm going to be getting 50 cent payments a week in here. And uh, I, uh, I just wanted to comment on that. And, so, and well, what, what are you saying? He has to pay more than he can afford? Well, no, no, it's not that. It's just that, um, that uh, some of these people claim that that's all they can afford. Well, uh, and now uh, they have the law to back them up. All they have to send in is these small payments yeah, that don't he, mean anything. Yeah, here's where we get into that area now about who makes the judgment about what he can afford to pay uh -huh. and who you are. Uh, you know, who are you? Well, I'm a representative of a company. That's all. Right. That's all. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, that, therein is, lies the dispute between me and the collectors. Uh -huh. and if they're here tonight, fine. I'd like to hear their point of view. Right. Who are you to make a determination that he can't afford more than two bucks a week? Well, we that's, them. That's, yeah. that's really hard All right. to say. I, I said to the guy, call the, the credit. I, this is a guy who called and says, I owe some money, I want to pay it, but I can only pay so much a week. I says, call the, uh, call the, the guy you owe the money to uh, and uh, tell him you can afford to pay this much and you'll pay it over a certain amount. Of. This guy says he wouldn't accept it. This guy says he this, wouldn't accept no, this it. This guy here on the phone now. Yeah. He's, he won't accept it. Well, he hasn't investigated he has, it. Well, he's, uh, he's taking into consideration the guy who's going to pay him too little and he's a liar. I don't think anyone, make, any collector makes a snap judgment of that. Do so. you make snap judgment? No, 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 I didn't say that. Let me give you, can I give you for instance? Yeah. Uh, just the other day, I called, uh, well, it's been a couple of months that I've been on this account. I called the lady. She uh, claims, oh, I haven't got any money. I can't mm -hmm. pay anything. Mm -hmm. I send you, I'll send you a dollar a week if I can. Then I call up again. I talk to her daughter. She says, uh, my mother can't come to the phone right now. She's out in the pool. So, uh, mm -hmm. to me, this means this lady is, is doing a lot better than I am. Why can't she pay her bills if I All can right. pay mine? So well, anybody who, pays a, uh, who owns a pool um, should be able to pay debts, huh? R right. That's, that's why I feel. Well, you know, well, I think... Well, that, that comes down to that question again about who are you. That's right. What makes a pool bad? Well, that's true. That's true, Arthur. Maybe, maybe if you have the chance to sit in here and talk to some of these people that we do every day long, all day long. Well, I think, see, that also is a bad scene. The fact that you talk to bad pay people all day long right. creates a bad atmosphere in your mind. It's like a cop who has to work in Roxbury all the time. He has a bad scene going in his head all right. the time. Uh, oh, that's true. Maybe I have a, a, actually a warped attitude towards the whole thing. Well, I, I, I would say that you do, sir, but that's beside the point. Yeah. Thank you for calling in. I'm going to ask you to, to the uh, two collection people. Now, what about that? You work at this mm. all day. You get a lot of deadbeats. Uh, I grant you deadbeats. You get a lot of people who are poor. You get a lot of people who are over their heads. You get all kinds of people. Now, well, since you working with that, that thing all day, you must have warped ideas then of what these people can afford or who they are. Uh, Jerry, because we're not dealing in a scientific area where mm -hmm. we can measure things and, and, and exactly. we can put them in a test tube mm -hmm. or, or uh, uh, put them on an oscilloscope or something of that nature. We're dealing with human relations. We're dealing with, uh, uh, with all kinds of people so that we have to make judgments. We can't sit around for a year and wait to make a judgment as to whether this man can afford to pay 50 cents a week or $2 a week or $50 a week. On the basis of our experience, on the basis of our discussion with him, we have to make a determination. If he offers 50 cents a week, and if in our honest opinion that's all he can afford to pay, we'll accept it. Well, on the other hand, we don't just accept it that way because we feel that we have a responsibility not only to our creditor, and to ourselves, but also to the debtor, if you so please. But, Lou, why is it, for instance, when anti-poverty legal services programs get involved in these kinds of cases, 
that they end up quite differently than the way they come in there. Now, how do you mean that, Bill? You know, uh, the fact that, that a, a low-income person has a, an attorney representing him, and, you know, this is our experience all the time, that as soon as the low-income person has an attorney representing them, then the relationship with the debtor, uh, with the creditor, excuse me, you know, changes a great deal. The threats go by the board. Uh, it is much more easy to negotiate a reasonable uh, settlement. And, and I'm, you know, I certainly would not maintain that people shouldn't pay their debts, because if they don't pay their debts, then I'm going to get stuck in the price of the merchandise that I buy because they haven't paid their debts. But, you know, it is this, this question that you, you have a, uh, a confrontation uh, structure of, of the, lo the, the collection agency is the enemy and, and the low-income person or the moderate-income person on the defensive. And, and he's, not in, you know, he's not an equal. He's not a peer. You know, you guys, uh, and I think this is a compliment to you, have been in this field a long time. Uh, you know a lot of angles that the, the debtor doesn't know. It's not a peer relationship. But as soon as an attorney gets in to the act as the advocate of the low-income person, then, you know, the situation changes completely. Did it ever occur to you that the average collector would much prefer to talk to an attorney than to a debtor? Did it ever occur to you that uh, an attorney or an agency such as your own or the Boston Legal Aid Society or any of your other agencies that are advocates of the poor people are a heck of a lot more reasonable in talking to us and a heck of a lot more cooperative in setting up settlement well, because arrangements. Because they're not emotionally involved. And we are, right. absolutely. They're right. not emotionally right. and involved. And we are, we are perfectly willing to talk in a reasonable tone and arrange a settlement that is within the bounds that, that uh, anybody can afford. Well, maybe this the system. I'm beginning to think it's the system that's bad. Uh, that, Jerry. That, there shouldn't be collectors in the United States. I don't want to run you out of your jobs. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about a system. There shouldn't be collectors in the United States. There should be another system whereby somebody who is neutral uh, uh, says, now, wait a minute, somewhat like a court, I suppose. Yes, a court. Uh, but a, a court says, well, uh, this is the story here, and the, uh, the other fellow is summoned into court, and, they, and both sides meet, and uh, somebody makes an adjudication yeah. of the, uh, of and, the and situation. And, Jerry, the way that works is quite fascinating, because when you go into court, representing the, the creditor is an attorney who usually goes in there with, with a half a dozen accounts and maybe 50 cases, and each little poor guy is up against an attorney, and there's, there's a mystique operating in the court that one, the little guy, is, is scared to death to be up before a judge. So it's not a peer relationship. The, the concept of an advocate, you know, of, of the, the low income, and I think there are people that are trying to beat, um, you know, the retailer, and, and I don't have any sympathy for them. But what I see we're doing is that through the methods of collection, we are forcing uh, the, the father of an intact family to desert and we're contributing and, and putting more people on the welfare rolls. Uh, we'll give these gentlemen a chance to answer in a moment. Stand by. Now that the 1970 cars are about to come out, we'd like to introduce our latest models. Frank Furters by Nepco. Eight shiny, fresh designs that are way ahead of the others. Go ahead, pit a Nepco Frank against the hottest mustard in town. That Nepco flavor really stands up. So you don't have to camouflage with chili sauce or onions. And why? Because vacuum packing is standard equipment. Because they're the freshest, beefiest Franks around with built-in juiciness. You can get just about any size or shape Frank you want. Because Nepco makes a model for every mouth in the family. They come skinny, fat, tiny, long, all beef with natural casing or skinless. And they're great for a multitude of occasions. Lunches, barbecues, weddings, picnics, and birthday parties. See all eight shiny new models at your Nepco dealer now. Better than that, test eat one. Can all those people who've reported flying saucers just be seeing things? There's a monster in Loch Ness, an awful great beast. I've seen it with my own eyes. The abominable snowman. You would believe it if you'd seen the footprint. Just behind what we think are the realities of every day, there's another world, the world of mystery and imagination. And one of the most extraordinary experiences awaiting you at this year's Man and His World in Montreal is a visit to this world of the unusual. If you're one of those normal, level-headed people who think there's an explanation for everything, <laughs> 
come to Manity's world in Montreal and take a stroll through the unusual world. Man and His World, the great international exhibition at Montreal, is open through September 7th. Don't miss it, and don't expect to go back home with the ideas you came with. All right, let's continue a comment. Uh, Mr. Williams, Ms. Tanner on the last comment. Well, Jerry, uh, I, th I, think, I think perhaps uh, uh, Bill, uh, in bringing, uh, bringing out uh, uh, his concern for the poor and those who are on the po under the poverty program, has, has perhaps misled the listening audience to the effect that uh, the collection industry is preying off the poor people and those who are on poverty programs. And the fact is that we're human beings, too, and beside being human beings, we're businessmen. And the fact is that collectors cannot make money off people who are unable to pay their bills. We cannot waste our time trying to force a collection from somebody who has not got the ability to pay. He's a, a person who is in a position whereby their income is not even sufficient to meet their, their basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter are, are, the, are the sorts of, of people and debtors that we are not interested in dealing with because we're sorry for them because they're in no position to pay. If they have bought things from a variety of credit granters beyond their means, then the problem is with the credit granter, not with the debtor, and not with the collector, certainly. It's with the system. And as far as we're concerned, I th I, I, if words can explain anything to Bill Martin and to people who are listening at the other end of the line, collectors are not hard-hearted people. We're interested in making a living by collecting just bills from people who are capable of paying them. May I ask a question? Mr. Rose. Uh, you were saying if these people can only pay 50 cents to a dollar or two dollars a week or a month on an account, would you, do you accept this? We do. So if you have, you're not, you're not making any money there yourself. Uh, if you stop and think of your time element, your paperwork involved, your people that you, 50 cents a week is nothing. No, but when you're servicing a client, you have to service the client in an overall picture. And while you might have one debtor that can only afford to pay 50 cents or a dollar a week, uh, on some of his accounts you're getting payment in full on the first request, which might be a couple of hundred or three hundred dollars. And you're willing to absorb the overhead of, a, of processing a 50 cent or a one dollar payment in order to ensure your client's goodwill. And another thing is this, that we know that there are lots of people that will bend every effort to meet an obligation even if it's to the extent of their ability of paying a dollar a week. And we appreciate that, and we're willing to go along with it. You know, Lou, one of the things that I would love to see you guys sponsor uh, is a study of the incomes of the persons who are brought into small claims court. I think you find two things. I think that you will find that in, by and large, they are low-income people or moderate-income people. You know, they may not be below the poverty level because you've got to be starving to death to meet the federal standards of being below the poverty level. Uh, but I think you will find people of very moderate incomes. I also think that you will find a very interesting pattern uh, of what merchants uh, seem to be using the collection methods of the collection agencies and the small claims court to make up for their inadequacies. You know, so they're so doggone eager to sell that they do not make the proper investigations. I'm going to break again for a moment, then to return to the calls and comments for Addis Williams, Lewis Tanner, both uh, collectors and members of, of associations, Bill Rose, a former collector, and Bill Martin, who's the executive director of North Corn and North Shore NASCAP. This is Jerry Williams on WBZ. Ladies and gentlemen, for the next 43 seconds, you'll be listening to dinner music to drink beer by Beck's Beer. <laughs> Last 43 seconds, you've been listening to dinner music to drink beer by Beck's Beer, the dry light dinner beer from Germany. Drybeck Importers, New York. W.
WBZ. And WBZ FM Group W Westinghouse Broadcasting in Boston. Um, what was that? Is it? Oh yeah. Okay. All I have is a tag. We're we're uh, <laughs> we're having a conversation between me and the control room folks. So if you wonder what I'm talking about, so do I. That's all I. Yeah. That that's all I have is this little tag. So what you have to do is find the cartridge, see, and I'll do the tag. Okay, in the meantime, we'll eliminate and get on to the next call at 254-5678 on WBZ. Hello? Yes. Yes, you're on the air now, sir. You're on the air now, sir. All right, Mr. Williams? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I'm the branch manager of a national collection agency. Will you turn off the radio so we can hear you better? All right, uh, I am the manager of a national collection agency. Okay, yes. I've been sitting here listening to such phrases as pressure, lean on, uh, small claims court, threats, the poor man, etc. Uh -huh. I would just like to get your views and your opinions on uh, exactly how you would like to see these debts recovered, these just debts which have been owing anywhere from six months to two years. Uh-huh. Well, that, is that what you do, sir? You lean on? Uh, no, sir. I advise that a okay. debt is owed I see. and you... of the actions open to my client uh -huh. for the recovery of this money. Do you pressure? What do you mean by pressure, sir? If, well, uh, you, you brought up the words. Now, I'm only, you know, you say uh, we, we've been using these words. And I'm going to re-examine the words with you because you say what tactics do you think we ought to use? Now, you say pressure. I ask you if you use pressure. Well, if advising a person that he owes a just debt, yeah. asking him if he has any disputes, and upon his uh, yeah. stating that he has no disputes, that he does owe the bill, mm -hmm. you advise him of the action that mm -hmm. could be taken against him, advise, mm -hmm. not yeah. pressure. Okay, I owe the money. Now, what are you going to do about it? All right, I am going to offer you an opportunity to pay the account out. Uh -huh. Handle well, it amicably, which not... would be satisfactory to yourself and okay. the client. And... Uh, uh, that's it. But uh, you seem to think that this is pressure by merely having a man pay a bill to avoid certain action is okay. pressure, I suppose.